Welcome to FinTech TV. I'm J.D. Durkin. President Donald Trump's foreign policy efforts during his second term at the White House has expanded to include a focus on South America. The president has taken a new approach to the war on drugs as the Department of War has struck over 20 boats smuggling fentanyl in Mexican and Colombian waters. The president cites the 70,000 Americans lost to fentanyl every year as the reason for those strikes. Out of a new report from the Wall Street Journal tells us a recently revealed secret memo from the U.S. government lists fentanyl as a potential chemical weapon. The memo was prepared by the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, and by listing fentanyl as a chemical weapon, the memo provides a legal basis for targeted strikes. Joining me here on the trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange is Colin Gage. Colin is the co-founder and CEO of Armor Sciences, which develops preventative immunogens to combat synthetic chemical threats such as fentanyl. What an important conversation and a really important time. It's great to have you down here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, JD. Appreciate it. So there's been a lot of debates around the legality of these strikes, a lot of debates around the due process components of these yes. strikes. Take us through the secret memo, which lists fentanyl as a chemical weapon and provides what the administration is saying is sufficient legal basis. Yes, yes. So, so I actually had a brief meeting with, with Pam Bondi, Attorney General Pam Bondi, earlier this year. And it's clear that the fentanyl crisis is not being done by accident. I mean, these are clear strikes on our population. We're seeing 22 high school age students die every single week, according to a 2022 report. I mean, this is something that's killed hundreds of thousands of people in the last few years alone. So this is obviously an attack on America, and we need to treat it as such. It's a national security crisis. Colin, there's undoubtedly growing tensions between the U.S. and Venezuela. Americans are seeing those headlines by the day about what potential escalation looks like between those two countries. Tell us about that potential escalation, and what are you watching for as that story continues to play out? Yeah, so I, I think it's this is, just, this is just the beginning. Unfortunately, bad actors south of the border are continuing to develop and iterate new threats against the United States, new synthetic drug threats. And these come in the form of, of nitazines, which are, are broadly reported on, carfentanil, metatomidine. There are many threats that are becoming fentanyl 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. And at Armor Sciences, our main responsibility is to develop long-lasting countermeasures against those threats. So regardless of what happens south of the border, we're ready for action. Uh, fentanyl, as we said during the intro, kills an estimated 70,000 Americans a year, over 100,000 Americans' lives uh, lost to it in 2023. Yes. Tell us about the dangerous uh, properties that could perhaps make it even a chemical weapon. What do those considerations look yeah, like? Yeah, so, so it's it's not even theoretical. We've seen fentanyl weaponized in the past. It was, it was weaponized in, in a Russian uh, hostage crisis, actually, in the early 2000s. So... The government is kind of pivoting off of what they've seen in the past as labeling this as a potential chemical threat. And I think it is a chemical threat. I mean, this has taken more American lives than World War One, World War Two, the Vietnam War. To me, that's that's a domestic terrorism. That That's a form of domestic terrorism in the United States. How are you viewing the relationship between these strikes and the overall fentanyl crisis, given the legal basis the administration is arguing? Yeah, so so I think these strikes south of the border in the Gulf um, are, are extremely justified. I mean, the, these people are coming in and bringing drugs into the United States. They know what they're doing. They We know what they're carrying and when it's happening. Um, for us, our, our responsibility at Armor Sciences is focused on biomedical countermeasures to these threats. So I think it's going to take a joint effort. I mean, the U.S. government is taking action on a defense front and, and utilizing you know America's force in that action. At Armor Sciences, we want to pre create the countermeasures that can help supplement that and provide safety and a defensive shield against these threats for our military and first responders. So Customs and Border Patrol agents, DEA agents, FBI agents who are going in there and taking on these, these really narco terrorists are going to need protection against these threats. And that's what we're here to provide. So talk to me more about how you feel you can provide to that conversation, the immunogens such as those that Armour is, is providing here. Um, what does that look like in terms of the lens of additional per things that can be provided by public officials? Sure. Yeah. So we are our, our immunogen. How it works is it stimulates the immune system to create a protective response against fentanyl. And eventually, we'd like to create that same protective response against other emerging drug threats that I mentioned. I think eventually, if our product goes through safety and efficacy in the, in the way that we think it will, I'd like to have this available as an option to hmm. military first responders that are the boots on the ground going in against these narco terrorists so that if they're accidentally exposed to fentanyl, accidentally exposed to carfentanil, metatomidine, 
they aren't going through an overdose or a panic attack. It's just like a bulletproof vest in, in, in the same way. Uh, we want to provide that protection to them on the front lines. What more will you be looking for out of the geopolitics angle of this story as it continues to play out? And how do you feel your work at Armor Sciences is uniquely situated to address yeah. whatever 2026 brings? Yeah, so so I think, like I said, I think this is just the beginning. The war is going to continue to escalate south of the border. President Trump has made it clear that he intends to completely end the fentanyl crisis. And I'm aligned with him. I want to end the fentanyl crisis too. I think that anyone who doesn't, uh, is just isn't seeing it clearly. There's hundreds of thousands of people dying every year. These are kids, these are students, mothers, fathers, and that's an empty seat at the dinner table. We need to protect against that on all fronts. That's gonna require cooperation between the private sector and the public sector. The US government and the private sector working together ultimately, I think, can end this. Con Gage is the co-founder and CEO of Armor Sciences. What an important time to have this crucial conversation. Thanks a lot for being here. Good Thank to have you. you. Thanks for having me.